Under EPH, the final ballot is one, two, three, and four, the four most popular non-slate works, plus one work from the slate. And so the slate only gets one final slot. Uh, I'm going to, we're missing some slides, are they hidden? Since we're in short time, I'm going to talk about one of, the, one of the biggest misconceptions that I've heard is, hey, doesn't that mean I should only list one work? We call that bullet voting. And if we can get the slide up, I'll show you why it actually doesn't help you. Um, but if not, then I'll, I'll just do it verbally. Basically, it's this. If you bullet vote, you can give at most four-fifths of a point to your favorite. At most. Most of the works that make the finals will have between 100 and 200 points. You have to get your work all the way up to fourth place so that it is never compared for nominations. Otherwise, it's still going to get eliminated because it's not going to have enough nominations to survive. So bullet voting doesn't do anything for you. All it's going to do is keep you from nominating for other works. The odds of you being able to help your work by bullet voting are essentially zero when it comes down to that. And the price that you paid for that was, OK, maybe this one didn't win, but now I've got four of the chances to get one of my favorites up there. And I realize that this is a voter education kind of thing. We need to you know, make sure that everybody understands that why bullet voting isn't going to help you. If we didn't get it up there, it's going to be OK. It's going to be all right. OK, in the interest of time then, OK, here we go. And so the best strategy is to nominate anything and everything that you feel is Hugo worthy. OK? And then, so conclusion then. It's a specific fix to a specific problem. It doesn't do anything other than plug the one hole that we have, that we all know is there. And it works with all the other things that we've talked about. It's politically neutral. And again, if there is no slate, EPH won't change anything. So given that, I'm going to open the floor to questions. Thank you. We have nine minutes for questions. The chair recognizes Mr. Illingworth. And there may be a delay with the interpreters. To getting the Hi, Tim Illingworth. Um, quick question. So the top nomination getter can never be eliminated, even if he gets in a cage match. The second most highest nominated can only be eliminated if he gets in a cage match with the first nomination, and so on down for five. Is that right? Actually, no. Only the microphone, please. Numbers one through four are safe. They will never come up for elimination because we take it from the bottom up. So it's only the fifth place that's going to that's going to be the one that's going to get in. If I understand your question correctly, I, did I misunderstand? I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. The total number of nominees. You, you, if the ballot, the slate ones get in, are the slate the second and third ones, they can still get into a cage match, and one will be eliminated. That is, in fact, possible if a lot of people voted for both of, you know, two of the top four. It's, it's possible that those could get into a cage match. That's exactly what happens with a slate, and that's kind of the purpose of the, of the system. It could theoretically happen without an intentional slate, but it's very unlikely. The chair recognizes the gentleman over there. I'm Alex von Thorn, the webmaster for Sasquan. And my Mr. Von Thorn, I recognize the gentleman in the Moby scooter. Sorry. I just said over there. Uh, Mike Stern, Rebel Rouser. Um, Rebel Leader. Sorry, my wife is Rebel Rouser. Um, anyhow, uh, the question I have is is there any way to uh, do this manually without a computer because I, I put support on uh, on Facebook yesterday and I got all sorts of uh, responses uh, that said we need some sort of independent manual verification the question is, is there an independent manual verification system so that we do not rely on a computer system that we can't verify? Yes, but I'm not going to kid you, it's tedious. Um, now, the algorithm is actually not difficult to implement. Somebody did it in Microsoft Excel without any programming. The current code outputs an audit file that for each round, and this is just my version, we can do whatever we want, but it puts out an audit file so that each round, it tells what's happening with every single work. And so you can trace it back by looking at that audit file. All it's doing is doing the same math that you would do for yourself if you were distributing it. But I'm not going to kid you, it's tedious to go through if, if there's an issue. But it's there, and we can do it manually. 
the chair, uh, the one chair will note that people approaching the microphone are not going to be recognized just because you're standing up by the microphone. Um, I will note I am also a member of a, uh, I also am on this uh, EPA. He's a mover. Okay. I, I, so, so just one, one more answer to that question very quickly. Um, the, the, the way they already do it and they will continue to do it is independently programming it twice in two different programming languages and not actually confirm any results until those two agree exactly. The chair will also note that currently there are two systems used that verify one another as we do the Hugos now. Um, the chair recognizes Mr. McCarty. I've, I've been recognized. My name is Dave McCarty. If you recognize me, you're probably having trouble. Um, I am, for those of you that don't know, the Hugo Administrator next year. Uh, regardless of whether this does or does not pass this year, uh, we will be working, I will be working with the gentleman on this to work on uh, how we would manually check the results, which has not been a task that they needed to do so far on their system, but they're, you know, we're going to work on this. Uh, so, uh, before it would get into use for real, we will find a way to make sure that we can check the results. The chair recognizes Dr. Adams. Bingo. <laughs> um, it, it's been claimed by the uh, proposers of this that it would not substantially change any of the previous um, uh, 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 f list of finalists, um, but you've only managed to do a sampling on 2013 data and a run on the real data from 84. Um, now, as has been stated, the real data is not generally available to people. We just had a debate on that. There are, however, people in this room who have, I think, the data from other years. Can I ask if there is anybody who has access to the data who has run it through um, the uh, proposed system? And if so, can they tell us what their results were? The chair recognizes Mr. McCarty since he may have an answer to the question. <laughs> yes, um, I have uh, completely anonymized LUNCON data. I have completely anonymized LUNCON data from last year. Um, I believe at this point that my modeling of their software was. Uh, you know, I, I am not sure that I got things correct. My model for London produced a change, and I don't know if that's a problem with my implementation or the software themselves. Uh, I am willing to work with the uh, proposers of this amendment to work through at least two sets of data and possibly three to show what we would get in a non-slate year versus a slate year. Um, Personally, I'd like to do that before we put it in the Constitution. I hope you don't take that as a, as a mean statement. Um, so I'm not generally for that for this year, but I think that we have the ability to do with modern data what we get now, show that it doesn't affect one, one year where we don't believe there's a slate and what it does when we know that there is a slate. But that's not data that we will have available to us until next year's business meeting in, practi in, in practical terms. The chair recognizes the gentleman in the red shirt. Yes, very quickly. Um, I, I just wanted to add one thing, that it doesn't have to formally be a slate for EPH to have an effect as well. So, for, and the classic example is Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who, in my opinion, one of the best science fiction shows on television. But if you think about it, there's five good Doctor Who episodes, and there's some very loyal fans. And so those five Doctor Who episodes are going to be there. They're not intentionally a slate, but is it really the best thing? Maybe you like Orphan Black, you know? And so what EPH would do would be it would essentially narrow those five nominations down to one. We'd have the very best Doctor Who episode going against the very best Orphan Black episode, and we'd find out what's the best thing on television. So even if they're not a formal mean evil slate, it still has the advantage in how things work today. Uh, one other point, um, we have actually, there is a for statistical procedure called bootstrapping which uses um, existing data to create fake uh, extra data thousands and thousands of times. 
Uh, when we did that with the 1984 data, we found that it got the same result about 4.5 out of 5 on average of the nominees in each slate. So it's about 90% the same. It's not that it would be 100% the same, but it would be very close to the same. Mike Johns, I've been looking at this algorithm and it seems to me that your tiebreaker, your tiebreaker contingency number four means that the more organized and cohesive a slate is, the greater the probability that the entire slate would disappear in a puff of smoke in one iteration. Uh, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be, if you want to maintain slates as a fair but not over-proportioned representation, shouldn't you replace elimination step number four with a coin flip or some other deterministic way to remove them one at a time in each iteration? And that's exactly right. We call that a slate with perfect discipline. And what it requires for it to ever happen is that for every single slate member has exactly the same nomination ballots and nobody else votes for any of the other slate works. If any one of those things fails, then you won't have that situation. We have an amendment to change it so that if you guys decide as a tiebreaker you want to eliminate the last one that was nominated or whatever, we can do that. We chose this simply because it's based on what's in the current constitution. There is just over two minutes left. Mr. Glazer, since you rose in the middle of the speech, for what purpose do you rise? I actually wanted to ask a question. So I was the chair will note that speakers must wait until the end of the current speaker to be recognized. The end of the current speaker. Mr. Glazer. speech. At the end of the speaker, once they die. Sean. Okay, every description I've seen of this has been a description. Um, what I would call in computer science a specification. It is not what I would call an algorithm. An algorithm is a formal statement written in a particular way that drives the, the the way that the computer program that would do this is written. And what I would like to know is, is there an algorithm in the formal sense which is published for this um, proposal? The code is freely available. I have not written it. I'm not a computer science major. I've probably not written it in the format that you want. Um, if somebody wants to show me the format they want, I'll do it that way. It's actually very simple to, to step through. The code is, again, the code is freely available for anybody who wants to look at it. I've got it on a, on a USB stick with me, and I'll be glad to give that to you for that. Language? We have a minute and a half left. Dr. Lori. Bingo. <laughs> I, I would like to say that the whole purpose of this is to discourage slates and making them eliminate each other is a feature, not a bug. <laughs> the chair recognizes the woman up front. We have just over a minute and 10 seconds left. Hello, my name is Joan Young. I have a question for a Keith Watt. Um, is this like single transferable vote? Is this like single transferable vote? It's a method used in iron. Not exactly. Um, not exactly, although I, I should probably turn this over to, to Jameson for this one. It's closest to the Australian one minute. election. If, if you're familiar with it, if you're familiar with the voting theory behind that. That's, it's not much more complicated than the instant runoff voting that we use. Uh, yeah, the, the important difference is that the ballot stays the same, so you don't actually have to rank the, the um, candidates. So that's the difference from single transferable vote, and it's the way of saying the same. The chair recognizes Lisa. There are 30 seconds left, I would note, so a little hustle is... As this is supposed to be a system to break a slate, I want to make sure it is also not a system to break an unintentional slate, they have not made that clear, of if we all actually love Doctor Who and didn't like any of the other programs well enough, then they should deserve to get it, not be broken by a system. The chair... If Doctor Who had 60% of the voters, they would get three of the five slates. That, that's fair. The chair recognizes Mr. Von Thorn. Ten. Ten seconds. The chair recognizes Mr. Olson. The chair has been staring in that direction and ignoring people on this side of the room. Please look over the entire room. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. I apologize. I can't look everywhere at once. I, I, will, I will do my best. I did see Mr. Yellowstand, but Mr. Von Thorn I just rose make, first. I just want to... 
I, I just want to ask if the Worldcon committee uh, can pick the software that's not tied to any particular code that may be hard to implement because it's hard to find people to support this. It's already been implemented in at least three um, different languages that I know of. It's pretty easy to implement. They could pick whichever. Question of privilege, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Stanley. I move the committee. Kevin Stanley, with the time having, having expired, uh, I move to the committee rise and report. Is there a second? Yes. Are there any objections? <coughs> Seeing none, the committee will rise and report.